Hello everyone, here is another video with OrgTube channel. In this video, I'm going to explain Williamson Eater synthesis. Williamson Eater synthesis is a reaction between alkoxide anion and an alkyl halide. This reaction is an SN2 reaction and alkoxide anion can expelling living group and then we get an ether plus our living group by Williamson ether synthesis we can synthesize asymmetry ether for performing Williamson ether synthesis we need to use primary alkyl halide or we need to use CH3 X if we use secondary or tertiary instead of getting an SN2 reaction we will have elimination reaction let's have some example for Williamson ether synthesis let us start with these two examples in first example we have the alkoxide anion O negative here and it's react with CH3I or iodomethane this is iodomethane and O negative can easily attack and kick iodine out of the structure. As a result, oxygen attached to the CH3 and we have our ether. And of course, sodium and iodide, they make sodium iodide, but normally we considering only the organic part of the reaction. In the second example, we have O negative here and sodium positive here. And this carbon, it is primary, so we can have an SN2 reaction. The oxygen attacks to this carbon and expelling bromine. Then here in our product, oxygen attached to this alkyl group. Let's have more examples. Here we have O negative, and we may think this O negative attack and kick bromine out, but this is not the case in this question. And the reason is this alkyl halide, it is secondary, and secondary alkyl halide with alkoxide anion, they cannot have SN2 reaction. Instead, they have E2 reaction, and the actual product we see is an alkene. So we have E2 reaction, and this alkoxide anion act as a base. Take this hydrogen, and electrons moving between carbon and expelling bromine from the structure. And we get an alkene. So if we want to synthesize this ether, we cannot use this starting material. Instead, we can use this alkoxide anion and this alkyl halide. Then we can solve this issue because here we have a primary alkyl halide and this oxygen can easily kick bromine out of the structure. So if we want to synthesize, this one works, and this reaction doesn't work. For formation of alkoxide anion, one of the common method is acid-base reaction. Alcohol, they have a low acidity. So if we want to remove the hydrogen for OH, we need to use a strong base. In addition of sodium hydride, we also can use sodium amide and also Grignard reagents can be used. By using sodium hydride, this H negative take hydrogen, then we have alkoxide anion. Of course, it's with sodium and just ignoring the sodium part. And then we have reaction between this anion and CH3, CH2, bromide. So this oxygen easily attack 
and expelling bromide then here is our product if instead of alcohol we have phenol we don't need to use a very strong base like sodium hydride some normal base like sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide they perfectly work let's have some example for phenols here are two examples for williamson ether synthesis by using phenol or phenol derivatives the first step we use base and sodium hydroxide easily deprotonate the phenol then we have phenoxide anion then this phenoxide anion in second step is going to react with bromopropane i'm just drawing in this form then o negative easily can attack and kick bromine out of the structure and our final product is this structure in the second example we also have a phenol derivatives whenever we have OH attached to the benzene ring it is a phenol regardless of what is the rest of the structure and we have hydroxide again it can easily take hydrogen from phenol the name of this phenol it is beta naphthol then we have the anion for beta naphthol and then this anion is going to react with allyl bromide then O negative easily attack and expelling bromide then we have this structure as a final product when we have tertiary alcohol for Williamson ether synthesis we can only perform reaction with methyl iodide we are not able to perform Williamson ether synthesis with other alkyl halide, even the primary alkyl halide. The reason is when we deprotonate this alcohol, we get this anion. We know this anion is a very strong and bulky base. And even for primary alkyl halide, we are going to have E2 reaction. So the only alkyl halide doesn't have E2 reaction is CH3. So when we have CH3 iodide, this O negative, it can easily react and we have this product. But when we have other alkyl halide, then instead of having SN2 reaction, we have E2 reaction. So this anion, it takes hydrogen and it forms an alkene. So the reaction of tertiary alkoxide anion with primary alkyl halide also is very unlikely. Most of the time, this reaction cannot be performed for Williamson ether synthesis. If we have halo alcohols, we can perform the internal Williamson ether synthesis. Because of the existence of halogens, we don't need to use a very strong base. This type of alcohol, they are more acidic and sodium hydroxide, it can easily deprotonate them. So OH can take hydrogen from this alcohol functional group. As a result, it's formed this anion. And this anion can have an internal SN2 reaction. And kick the bromine out of the structure. To make it easier, I mark this atom with numbers. So we are going to have a ring with five atoms. And one of these atoms, number one, it is oxygen. So by this reaction, we can synthesize THF or tetrahydrofurane, a very famous solvent in organic chemistry. Here is another example for internal Williamson ether synthesis again the OH can take hydrogen as a result we have this anion and we have bromine then this O negative can kick bromine out of the structure 
And here the numbering is more useful when we have substituent on our compound. So we have a six member ring with one oxygen atom. If this is number one, number two, then on number three, we should have a methyl group. And then the rest of atom, they are just CH2 group. So by using halo alcohols, we can have internal Williamson ether synthesis and our products are cyclic ether. The protonation of alcohol is not the only method for formation of alkoxide anion. We may have alkoxide anion after reaction of Grignard with aldehyde and ketone. Let's have two examples for this type of reaction in the last part of this video. Here is the first example for using Grignard in Williamson ether synthesis. This Phenyl magnesium bromide, this negative benzene ring, easily adds to the aldehyde and ketone, then push the double bond to the oxygen, and then we have this anion, and here we have phenyl group or benzene ring. Then right now we have our product, it is alkoxide anion. Normally for synthesis of alcohol, we add acidic condition or we acidify the mixture and we convert this O negative to OH but instead of synthesis of alcohol we can use this anion for Williamson ether synthesis so in the next step when we add an alkyl halide like iodoethane then this negative oxygen can easily attach to the carbon and kick iodine out of the structure as a result we have this ether as a final product. And here is our last example. Again, we have a Grignard. So this negative carbon, it easily attacked to the carbonyl group, push the double bond. As a result, we get this alkoxide anion. And keep in mind that this alkoxide anion, it is tertiary. So the only reaction is good for this alkoxide is using methyl iodide or iodomethane. So if we add CH3I, this oxygen, attack and kick iodine out of the structure. As a result, we have OCH3 here and we synthesize this ether as a final product. Please keep in mind that instead of aldehyde and ketone, we may use reaction of Grignard and epoxide. For example, I can use the same Grignard here and instead of aldehyde or ketone, have this epoxide. So if I have this reaction with a Grignard reagent, this negative carbon easily attacked to the ring and we know it's always attacked to the less substituted carbon in epoxide. Then it pushed this oxygen to the next carbon. So here we have a tertiary alkoxide anion. And here we have that Grignard part. So we can use also this anion in Williamson ether synthesis. So if I use methyl iodide, I can easily perform an SN2 reaction and our final product is this structure. Thank you for watching this video. To watch more video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.